So our next speaker is Dr. Turkey Faisal. She. Good afternoon, everybody. And uh, I'm very happy to share with you my thoughts. Uh, to give you some background about myself, I am really good at reading the future. <laughs> uh, when these things fall, just uh, and all these things, uh, I should be very happy. And in fact, I'm not. I was extremely sad because what I wrote, what I published, what I've been arguing privately with a very high level, all right, so I'm not happy of what I've been warning and writing about for the last years, more than 10 years. Uh, and that's maybe one of the things that have really driven, you know, made me go into, uh, uh, go for my master and doctor, which it took me 10 years, because I want to give more credibles to the people that I am, uh, Okay, so before we start, I think the best way forward on a relationship is lies in admittingly it's all over, it's in current incarnation. The Saudi-US relationship, unfortunately, I was trying to avoid the crash for many, many years. Unfortunately, people did not get that until to the reach to where we are now. We'll go more in detail on that. Well, Saudi Arabia they have since 1932, and uh, they consider themselves the Saudi as an ally of the U.S. And the truth is, strong nation never ally with weak nation. They use them, they utilize them, and then when they finish with them, they drop them in the garbage. And this ally business, many Saudi illusions have that. And one of the biggest failures we have in Saudi Arabia for the last 70 years, that is our relationship is restricted between White House administration and the capital of Saudi Arabia, restricted to a handful of people who are doing the relationship. What's the result? Well, we all know what the result was. Saudi Arabia is the largest exporter and seven years of cooperation. And all this ended up with just 97 senators voted all against Saudi Arabia. With all the billions of dollars we provide, with all the things we do, we end up with just that. And I'm not surprised because the ally word that was the wrong being used. We use you, we utilize you, when we finish, we throw you. Saudi relationship basically oil, arms sales, a little bit of food, and then socialist education, sustainable agriculture development. I have to put that in, even though I'm a little bit out of the way, but uh, I'm at, uh, at heart, I believe in the agriculture, especially social agriculture, and world and regional securities. The U.S. is the biggest arms dealer in the world, and Saudi Arabia is its number one customer. For nearly 75... Okay, unfortunately what's going on between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. is the U.S. Americans are victims of it, the Saudis are victims of it. Bottom line, there is 0.1%, I don't know how much you believe in Obama, but what he said, there is, we have created the democracy, the capitalism with democracy, we, they got married, they created an economy of 1%, on everything, 99% on nothing. You can see here, this is the sales of the arms. We are buying arms right and left, and what's the value for it? It's absolutely worthless. 
but it's the interest of the 0.1%. I was there, Carlyle, did I say it right? Carlyle Company. The Carlyle Company is one of the largest companies were paying President Bush, the father, $50,000 every time he mentioned the word Carlyle. So, how many times? 10 times? Okay, that's your meeting. And officially, he stopped doing that when his son, which is George Bush, the son, run for a president, he, he have canceled that uh, agreement with them. It's not under the table, it's published. I think we usually call it the Carlyle. Carlyle. Carlyle Group. Carlyle Group. I never can say it. Okay. Okay. So, Saudi Arabia, United States, oil in between. And what's included in that barrels is a lot. As you can see here, how much the U.S. Saudi Arabia imports from 1990 to uh, 2016. Well, we have the economic relationship, as we could said here, 1.5 billion, and this is how much trade investment we have between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia. Student, we are the fourth largest group, I think almost 100,000 Saudi students in the U.S. Uh, we have 8,000 Saudi families living in Washington, D.C. alone. We have 36,000 Americans working in Saudi Arabia. <coughs> in here, I believe that is the relationship how to go forward is through social agriculture, improve the life of many, many people. And using agriculture as a tool to enhance security, alleviate poverty, and promote economic uh, growth. Uh, <clears throat> okay, now we get into the. About a month ago, the Bloomberg got an order for the freedoms of rights have released a secret between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. in 1973. President Nixon, this, uh, he find out there, is, there isn't enough gold to cover all the debts of the U.S. So they have to free the dollars. If they free the dollars, the dollars will fall down and would lose a lot of its value. So he sent uh, his secretary in a nationwide to truth, but the real thing was Deal was do or die plan. That is what he sent Simon for Saudi Arabia. There is don't come back to me without a deal. I'll send you all over the world, but I don't care. The real reason for his trip was to go to Saudi Arabia and all dollars, oil will be sell and coated by dollars only. And all the surplus of your money will come to finance our treasury bills. So I ask all the times when I have in the meetings, what does Saudi Arabia mean to you guys? Many people said, ally, friend, all these things. Bottom line, if Saudi Arabia decided today to sell oil and coated it by different currency, that will destroy the dollars from uh, its dominion. Second thing, is uh, if we stop buying treasury bill. And as what uh, this guy here, Whitney Smith, the 117 billion uh, make the kingdom one of the, American, the, the largest uh, foreigner uh, creditors. I think the last time I checked it, it's, uh, we are number three. It's, uh, we are number three. The, Japanese, the Chinese, Japanese, Saudi Arabia. Uh, in the embargo, uh, 
they trapped the Russian to invade Afghanistan, and when they, uh, they tra uh, uh, invaded Afghanistan, they said, well, because they invaded Afghanistan, we would embargo the food and Saudi Arabia, which was a, at the time there was a lot of songs going on, a barrel of uh, oil for a bushel of wheat, and Saudi Arabia have started the self-sufficient uh, of wheat, and this is how they start the agriculture in Saudi Arabia. Operations of Gulf Storm, we hosted nearly half a million people, and the U.S. and Saudi Arabia, they are great on destroying things, but they don't know what to do with the aftermath. We, uh, we built the Iran, you know, the Shah. We gave them the best technology, the American did, the best technology to do everything. And he started his five years plan. In the middle of it, they said, no, 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 you cannot because you don't have, you know, the money you're getting, it's enough. So he raised the price oil. So much until it reached $11. When it reached $11, the US and Saudi Arabia, they collide together, pump more oil so the oil goes down. So we destroy basically the shop. Then it come the Islamic movement, that which is, they really helped according to the Shah book. So the rise of, of uh, the Islamic uh, organization came, they were stupid, they want the head of the Shah. They don't want anything else. According to Bill Gates, not Bill Gates, uh, what's his name? Gates, Minister of uh, Secretary of Robert, State, Robert Gates. Yeah. According to Robert Gates, he was the one who was taking note uh, with Brzezinski. Mm -hmm. We gave you everything. We'll do anything for you. They said we want the head of the shop. And that's how it collapsed. And then we decided, okay, let's go against the war of uh, Iran. So we went with, with a war with Iran, with the sectarians, and now we're paying the price. Same as we did. We went to fight the Russians. What's the best way? Let's create all these Islamic witches. We created them in the 50s to fight Arabism and nationalism. Now we decided to build them again, and we did succeed to destroy the Iranian, and like what President Brzezinski said, you want me to apologize? 3,000 people got killed. Afghanistan got destroyed for the price of bringing the Russian Empire. You want, to, you want me to apologize? You should thank me for what I did. And uh, that is officially what he had with the a magazine's interviews. I think that magazine wasn't circulated in the US. It is a French magazine. So, then, this military base was built, run, managed by Saudi Arabia, billions of dollars, the U.S. is using it for free. U.S. Congress recently passed a ju uh, just a 97%. So everything we did for the last 30, 40 years, it just went down the tube. And that's what That's what happened when, when you work with only with one channel. Way forward, strengthening cooperation, U.S. share goals in regional and security trade and investment, not to serve the 1%, to serve the 99%. Saudi Arabia and U.S. cooperation in achieving the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, number one, number two, and number uh, 17. They should start to work more and more on global, international interest, not the interest of 1% in the US and in Saudi Arabia and worldwide. Has been, as I said here, it's been come only to uh, White House to the head of Saudi Arabia state. We don't deal with anybody else and that is what we end up with. Uh, as we could see, that's all it's in here, history, just the threat to limit Saudi Arabia cooperation on the national security issue, including counterterrorism and everything else. I think, personally, just that would be impossible to implement, but 
the cost and the side effect of it, it will be hellacious. With President uh, Obama, I mean President uh, Trump is in power, that will make the side effect will be a lot. I'm very happy for Saudi Arabia that they got, Obama, they got Trump, and I'm very sad for the US that they got uh, Trump. Cooperation between Saudi Arabia and the University of Arizona will do a lot on social and we will have a lot of impact. Uh, they have survived a lot of the problems. I don't know whether they could really survive at this time. Relations should not be taken for granted. Must be nurtured, uh, nurtured otherwise will drift away. It's like your husband and wife, boyfriend, girlfriend. You throw a lot of shit at each other, pretty soon they're going to say, it's enough, and it's going to be. No. Just close your eyes, and, and just for a moment, just for a moment, if you have your way, I have my way, as for the right way, correctly, way, the only way does not exist. Uh, the Philippine president, uh, Duterte, look to the damages he have done to the U.S. Asia strategies. And the relationship between Philippines and the USA for many, many years is like servant and server. He got paid for everything. His economy depends on the US, but then when he put it on the table, all what I'm getting paid is 50 to 100 million dollars. Look to the damages he had done. One of the first thing the President of the United States has to do is to cure, to salvage the Philippine-US relationship. Uh, what would happen if Saudi Arabia drifted away? And I'm sure with just a Saudi Arabia will drift away. Unfortunately, I was in Washington and we have met every person you could think of who was involved with all this deal, including one guy, which is, I cannot mention his name, but he was very, very powerful. He wanted to convince me about the problem of Syria. I said, Syria, it's you and us who have destroyed Syria. It's you and us who have built ISIS. Why? Because the pipelines doesn't go from Iran to uh, Europe. It must go from Qatar to Europe. Why? Because Saudi Arabia and the US, they thought Putin are getting strong. So what's the best way? Two ways we can cut his hand. Number one is built an oil and gas pipelines from, uh, from Qatar to Europe, that would destroy uh, the, the Russians' power with the gas. Then Saudi Arabia, the oil price was a little bit down. Let's do what we did in the 80s. Together we destroy the market. If we pump more oil, the oil will go down just a little. Not much, but just a little. That's enough to destroy the Russian. The idiots didn't think it's not $140, didn't go to $120. It went from $140. To thirty dollars. So Syria, in a very simple, and I told them that you and us, we have actually built that team. And when President Trump said ISIS was built by Obama and Hillary Clinton, he is a one hundred percent right. They haven't built it themselves, but they have told their allies to finance it. Same as we did, they did when. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Brzezinski came to Saudi Arabia and to Egypt said we have to create Al-Qaeda to destroy the Russian. Did we decide it? Did we think what are we going to do after that? Unfortunately, we did.
have entitled my very small presentation, The Tangled U.S.-Saudi Relationship, Looking Forward to the Age of Trump. Um, it might be something of a cliché, but of course the U.S.-Saudi relationship is a long-lasting, uh, over now half a century long codependency, started with an agreement in the immediate post-war uh, environment by FDR and King Abdulaziz, who would set the tone for the next half century, codependency based on oil, security, uh, and uh, uh, an intimate international relationship. At the heart of the U.S.-Saudi codependency is a material complex, uh, namely the petrodollar recycling machine, in which the abundant Saudi resources and the most um, uh, abundant oil exports are priced and sold in dollars, and then those dollars are reinvested in the global economy uh, through treasury bonds, through other forms of investments that sustain the global economy, the IMF, uh, and the U.S. economy in particular. And so this material complex of relationships continues to be at the heart of the U.S. Saudi codependency. As you can see in this graphic from The Economist, most of the petrodollar recirculation from Saudi Arabia goes back to the United States, uh, but there's also uh, a part of it that goes through Europe, and of course other parts of the globe. Uh, but not just in terms of oil, but in many other sectors as well, U.S. and Saudi Arabia have an intimate trade relationship. Anything that I had to say about the reset button in the U.S. Saudi relationships uh, after last night, I, I threw away all my notes because I'm, I'm glad that you talked about that, Layla, because I just don't have a clue. I really don't. What I'm going to talk about today is an approach that I take to what many people call terrorist networks. Uh, what I do is I've studied for 35 years organizations. I study them in the public sector, the nonprofit sector, and occasionally the private sector. I have a fundamental bias. I believe that human beings around the world, no matter where they are, have sort of similar capabilities to organize them. So anytime you want to organize anything collectively, there are only really a few things that you can do. Now this is whether you want to organize armies or whether you want to organize major corporations, or whether you want to create nefarious networks to do your enemies harm. That that's what we have as human beings. It's sort of a fundamental, I guess, uh, sociological view right? uh, of, of what we have to organize with. And that we try to put these together in different ways. So I don't think, I'm not talking about terrorist networks, or what we call terrorist networks as being any different in any part of the world. I think if we're looking if we're looking at the FARC in Colombia, I think if we're looking at the Tamil Tigers in Sri Lanka, I think if we're looking at Jamal Islamia in Indonesia, or if we're looking at ISIS in Syria or Iraq, same thing. Same set of problems. In fact, many of the organizing tools would be used by CEOs of major corporations, by generals, uh, and by uh, cabinet secretaries or ministers in many countries around. So that's, that's the perspective. The, to give you a little <coughs> sort of uh, foreshadowing, what I do think is what creates dark networks, and I'll explain what I mean in just a second, can be different. So that what's driving ISIS may be different than what's driving FARC. And what's driving ISIS in the Middle East is different than what's driving ISIS in Europe and the United States. So recruitment, radicalization may be a different process in different parts of the world, but the tools that human beings use 
to come together collectively to try to have an effect on whatever it is that they want to have an effect on for the same. So that's that's the formula. And I'll be the last presenter. I'll give this to you no more than 10 minutes, then we can have the open session. So I'm going to be focusing on uh, strategic agriculture. And I'm going to talk first about Saudi Arabia, and then I'll talk about the U.S. Uh, okay, it's incontrovertible that Saudi Arabia and the United States are very important strategic partners. So we must find ways to uh, get this relationship to work. Saudi Arabia has a current population of about 30 million, and two-thirds of them are native Saudis. The rest are foreign workers. Urban population swelled from 48% in the 1970s to about uh, 6 million, which is about 80% in 2000, when its population was up to 20 million. Um, urbanization, uh, which is centered in the kingdom's commercial house of Riyadh, western province and eastern province, is expected to rise further to 88% by 2025 when the kingdom's population reaches about 34 million. So there is this mass exodus from the rural area uh, to the few urban centers in the kingdom taking place. And a big driver for that is rural poverty. So uh, the strategic uh, agriculture solution here is the Ohio University, University of Ohio University of Arizona joint cooperative program uh, to be able to help these uh, two villages that we selected. So this is a very specific example by which uh, we could have this relationship between uh, the United States and Saudi Arabia improved. Um, and these are just some of the key people, uh, of course, Kevin Fitzsimmons. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Khaled Asri, who's our counterpart in Howard University. Uh, Dr. Taran is in public health here at the University of Arizona. And of course, Dr. Turkey is facilitating all of this. Um, this is just a meeting with the university officials at the University of Ohio, including the rector or the president. So here in the U.S., and I want to be closer to uh, home here in Arizona, um, cultivating an emerging ag economic hub in Arizona for hay. And I put a question mark in there because this requires really objective uh, evaluation and analysis and policy making.